want us to remember uh, Komla Dumont? My memories of Komla at media events in South Africa, in Kenya, in Ghana, here in London, are of a journalist of outstanding integrity, uh, deep insights, uh, a warm and engaging personality. One always had a sense that this was a journalist in full command of his brief. He was, for me, the outstanding uh, African journalist of his generation, and he'll be much missed. What did he represent to you? I think he represented, for me, journalistic excellence, uh, a character and a mentality that was deeply rooted uh, in Ghana and in Africa. Uh, he was, of course, uh, a journalist on the world stage, uh, but you never forgot that this was a proud African who brought uh, insights, who brought an understanding that was reflective of an African personality. And this is a very precious thing uh, in the media and one where, sadly, all too many uh, are found wanting. But uh, with Komla, always you had this integrity, uh, this sense of his roots, a vision and clear-sightedness, uh, which uh, really will be terribly missed, I think, uh, in the media, but also you know, amongst his, his friends, uh, his family. And one's heart goes out uh, to his family at this time, his lovely wife, their children, his beloved sister, his extended family. This is a grave loss. Indeed. Where were you and how did you get the news? Uh, I uh, was uh, in Switzerland. Uh, I was at a meeting. Uh, my wife rang uh, in tears. Uh, Janet uh, uh, was uh, a close friend uh, of uh, the family, as was I. Uh, his sister, Mawena, was a dear, dear friend of my wife, Lady Boateng, and myself. And we just couldn't believe it. Uh, we were uh, shell-shocked, frankly, that a young man in the full vigor uh, of uh, life, uh, he was uh, a larger-than-life personality, yeah. uh, smart and sharp in mind and in suit. Uh, <laughs> he, yeah, and I think we need to uh, we need to reflect on the happy times. Yeah. Uh, we need to reflect uh, on his strength of character, uh, his wisdom, uh, and his vitality. Uh, uh, that has been extinguished in one sense, but in another sense, his light in memory burns as bright as ever. Any particular interesting encounter you had with him that you'd like to share with us? Well, uh, for uh, me, uh, I, I can uh, recall uh, a number. But in all of them, there was this sense of humor. Uh, there was this sense uh, that there was an intellectual grasp that was underpinned by an emotional intelligence. So that whatever was going on around him, uh, always he came straight uh, to the point. Wherever there was chaos, uh, and sometimes when you are, because he was not just a broadcaster, he was a great compare, yeah. and sometimes events go wrong. <laughs> uh, but Kumla was never at a loss uh, for words. Uh, and we will miss him, dear brother. How would you want him to be remembered? As the outstanding journalist of his generation, uh, as a great African, uh, as a loving husband, father, and brother, and a friend to so many. Right, so here at uh, number 13 Belgrave Square in central London, a book of condolences is being opened for Komla Dumo, people wanting to pay their last respects and their, uh, you know, write tributes to him. And so I've been encountering some of them and uh, they've been speaking to me and telling me their encounters with uh, Komla Dumo and how they'd like him to be remembered. And I have uh, one uh, lady here with me. Please tell me your full name. Um, I'm Dorothy and everyone knows me as D. Okay, yeah. so, uh, well, Dorothy what? Osei. Okay, yeah. so how exactly do you remember Komla? Um, growing up in Ghana, obviously, I, I did work for Vibe FM, so that is how, obviously, we all got to know Komla, because I think he was on Joy that time. Um, so that is how I know growing up. Um, when I moved to London, 
and he moved over, we became a bit more closer because I decided to start um, chasing my dreams, which was in fashion styling. And I remember he used to encourage me a lot. So how do I remember him? He was a very encouraging person and he always pushed people to chase their dreams. So, yeah. My name is Frank Anderson uh, and I'm based here in London. Okay, what do you do here? I'm a journalist here as well. So, uh, how do you remember Komla? Well, for me, Komla was a friend. Um, not that close, close friend, but we, we met, so I, you know, attend various business conferences here. And anytime we met, Komla was always cracking jokes with us. And to see a person that has attained that status in life, you know, still having time to go back to his roots. I mean, those of us, his younger ones, he always found time to be with us. And so for me, not only Ghana, Africa has lost a very important personality. For me, Kumala Dumont was a brand of, a brand of Africa. He told the African story nobody else was prepared to tell. And so he'll be greatly missed. He also spoke with the High Commissioner who tells us arrangements made to get Kamala's body flown back to Ghana. Well, I, you know, the nature of our job is such that uh, we stay up 24 hours, especially in London. Uh, so uh, mid-morning Saturday, I had a message uh, that uh, Kobna, something had happened to him. And I hadn't heard from him. I hadn't spoken to him uh, for some time. So I wasn't sure as to exactly what was happening to him. So we started doing our investigations and we found out that uh, he wasn't, you know, he had fallen sick and had been taken to a hospital. Uh, but uh, within 30 minutes, we got confirmation that he had passed away. We got in touch with the brother who is in the US, tried to get him here as soon as possible. Uh, but of course, you know, coming down from the U.S., he needed a visa and whatever. So um, we came to the mission and worked, worked it out. So fortunately for us, everything is fine. He will be coming tomorrow, tomorrow morning. But I did also be in contact with the, with the spouse, the widow, and uh, the senior staff of the High Commission and myself paid her visit. And uh, she was not in the best of her condition, as you can imagine, emotionally. Uh, but uh, she handled herself well. She was able to explain to us the circumstances under which uh, Komna passed away. The High Commissioner missed some opportunities to get a body in the shape that he's supposed to be in. So I would insist that everything be done um, before they said. If it takes us a week, fine. Um, but I don't think there is any, 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 any rush, you know, to, uh, to send a body. Uh, because the community has very high expectations. And I'm telling you, if we don't give the community what it wants, they will lynch me, and I don't want to be lynched. <laughs>